This is video four out of 20 in our beginner series and introduction to AI. Imagine stepping into the watch floor of a futuristic spaceship, ready to explore the vast universe of artificial intelligence. That's what diving into Jupiter Lab feels like. Jupiter Lab isn't just an IDE, it's your personal spacecraft designed to make your journey into the world of Python and AI both thrilling and intuitive. With its sleek interface and powerful tools, you'll feel like a space captain, navigating through galaxies of code, creating stellar programs, and watching your AI dreams come to life. As budding AI engineers, you'll start by mastering the basics. You'll learn how to launch your very own Jupyter Notebook, a magical canvas where you can write, test, and even see your Python code in action. It's sort of like having a conversation with your computer. Want to see the result of a calculation, visualize data, or even display a cool graphic right away? Just hit run and watch the magic unfold right before your eyes. And the best part? Mistakes are just wormholes to new discoveries. With Jupyter Lab's user-friendly interface, debugging becomes like a fun puzzle, guiding you closer to your AI aspirations. But the journey doesn't stop there. As you become more familiar with this cosmic tool, you'll also discover its endless possibilities. From importing powerful Python libraries to harnessing the might of machine learning algorithms, Jupyter Lab is the launch pad for all of your AI adventures. So strap in, future AI engineers. With Jupyter Lab as your co-pilot, you're in for an exhilarating ride through the cosmos of code. All right, so now that I've introduced you to Jupyter Lab, let's walk through some specific steps that will actually teach you guys how to set this up on your own computer. Now for this tutorial, we're gonna walk through how to do it using um, Apple, um, iOS, I'm using the iOS operating system. So the first thing that I wanna highlight is that if you want to actually set up Jupyter Lab on a Mac, either with Intel or Apple Silicon, it's pretty straightforward. Um, but I would strongly recommend that we use a tool like Homebrew. Now Homebrew is a package manager for Mac OS X, um, also Linux, that actually makes it easy to install software. And if you haven't installed Homebrew yet, um, this is exactly how you do it. So you want to actually first go into your search bar. You want to look for Terminal. And from Terminal, you can then open up this window, which I have up on my side. For some of you, it might be very small. And so the way that you increase the font is actually just click on Command and then plus, 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 plus until you go to the size that is amenable for you. So the first step is to basically take this install homebrew section and then copy and paste. Before we jump into it, let me just tell you why you want to use a package manager. So package manager actually is a tool that helps you automate the process of installing, updating, and removing software packages. And the main reasons why you want to use it are one, for simplicity, um, because this basically handles the whole process. Two, consistency, because a package manager will make sure that your software got installed correctly and consistently. Um, three, also for safety, because they usually use the source software from a trusted repository, which minimizes usually the risk of downloading malicious or bad software. And finally, it also provides you an opportunity for updates and maintenance that are easy. So if software has a security you know, vulnerability, the package manager can quickly update that to the patched version. So with that, I'm just going to basically copy and paste this little homebrew blob, um, and you'll see me run it here. It's asking for pseudo access, so what that means, oh, I don't even remember my password, shoot. Let's try that again. That means um, super do or super user. Um, so now it's just confirming, like, am I cool with that? I'm saying yes, yes. Um, and now it's just sort of doing its thing. So while it looks for that software update, um, you should have a similar experience. Um, and now it's basically downloading all those tools. You might want to remain on standby because usually a lot of this um, system will require, obviously, like a strong internet connection. So I wouldn't recommend doing this uh, disconnected from the internet because it's actually downloading it from an internet repository. All right, now that that's completed, uh, you now should all have Homebrew in your home directory. So the next step is for us to actually install Python. Now, Apple Silicon Macs usually come with Python installed, but it's probably a good idea to just you know install a separate version for development purposes. So we're gonna try using Brew, which you just downloaded, to help you install uh, Python. And this is to ensure compatibility, so I'm just gonna type Brew install Python. Um, I actually already have it, but you'll notice that it's basically setting it up yet again, um, and we're generating some of these certificate bundles. 
Um, and this is again another place where it might hang and take a little bit of a while. Oh, here we go. Um, so it's just basically pulling all of those required, you know, packages to help Python run. This is really exciting. Um, feel free to walk away. You'll usually get an indicator uh, once this completes. All right, so you'll know it's done when you can basically type in the terminal again. Now what we're going to do is just check on the version of Python that we installed. Uh, looks like I have Python 3.9.16. And now the final step is for us to finally, after these preliminary steps, install JupyterLab. So what I'm using is pip, pip3 actually. 3 indicates Python 3, um, and pip is basically Python's uh, package manager. So similar to how we have a package manager for your actual computer or your iOS, which is Brew, we now also use pip to manage Python packages. And JupyterLab, at the end of the day, is sort of wrapped up into this sort of Python package. So I'm typing pip3 install and in JupyterLab. And for me, it's basically streaming requirements are already satisfied because I have been using this for pretty much most of my life. But for you guys um, on the on the call and on this uh, video, you'll notice that um, it will probably ask for permissions to just make sure um, and just make sure to provide those authorizations. And once you're ready, this is where the magic begins. You simply type in Jupyter, and Space Lab will actually open up a whole interface. If you do Jupyter Notebook, that will also open an interface. But we'll get there um, when we get there. So let's start with Jupyter Lab. And you'll see here that it's serving on my local host. And this is exactly what it will and should look like. Um, so now you've pretty much opened up a new tab in your default browser with this JupyterLab interface. And it's from here that we can actually create new Jupyter notebooks, text files, or also open the terminal again. Um, you might want to also know how to just shut down the JupyterLab. So what you want to do is actually go back to the terminal and what I'm pressing right now is actually command um, C. Just kidding. I'm actually pressing control C. Um, and then you'll see that it asks you if you want to shut down this Jupyter server. So I was too slow. I basically want to, again, click on control C and quickly say yes, Y, and then enter. And that shuts down the node. And then you'll know it worked because as you saw right here, it then says the server connection error. Um, has popped up. It says that the connection could no longer be established. Um, and that's about it. So excited to show you guys how to move forward in the next video. And in this video, you've actually learned how to successfully set up JupyterLab on your Mac with Apple Silicon. This is video 4 out of 20 in our beginner series and introduction to AI. By the end of the series, you'll be ready to learn more advanced concepts of AI and machine learning which will allow you to elevate your career in tech and remain in demand on the job market.